father. Hello, son. I got the radio crank, and people are like, what are you doing? I'm like, my dad's on the radio, you know, shut up. It's been great for as long as I've been listening, and you're one of the true uh, philosophers of our time. All the bad decisions I made in my life, I always thought, I should listen to Tom. I should listen to Tom. I'm going to be successful, and you keep me motivated. I'm kind of, I'm really bummed that you're going to be off the air. Dad. Son, how are you? This is terrible. This is a terrible day. Now I want to speak to you directly. You're in the car right now. You're heading home from work. You've been a loyal supporter. It could be for 11 years. It could be for five years. It could be for five months. And one of your options on the dial is being taken away. You know, believe me, I understand that. Some of my favorite radio personalities, I, I, I used to live for radio as a kid. I used to want to be a radio personality as a kid. It meant so much to me to go down to the radio station and see what was going on down there. And finally, the day came when I went down to the radio station, and I never went back. I've been in here inside the box now since I was 14 years old. I understand that you would like me to keep doing the show, and I would love to keep doing the show. But you have to understand, obviously, that um, you know I'm not the only one here. It's not my train set. And so uh, I am going to graciously step aside, and I'm going to say to my uh, my superiors here at CBS, I'm going to say best of luck. Best of luck with whatever you do. I mean that with all my heart. It's very sad to say that I won't be able to listen to your voice on a daily basis anymore, but I really want to thank you so much for everything, for the great advice, for the laughter, and everything you've done for us. All right, we are less than one minute away from wide open telephones on the Tom Likas Show. It's time to check in with all departments, make sure everyone's prepared for today's broadcast. Music library, are you there? Uh, music library, ready. Good, how about the sound effects people? Oh, sound effects, ready. Okay, master clock people, timing, are you there? Six, Hello. Timing and flow, ready. Wonderful, turntables? Turntables, ready. Great, pre-recorded department. And our uh, splicing people? Dubbing and editing. Ready, Perfect. Uh, ready, thank ready, you. Ready, Enough. Ready, Colon already. Ready, special ready, effects. Are you there? And uh, thank you, special effects. Uh, special voice effects. Oh, that's wonderful. How about the sales department? Are you there? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, engineering department. Are you there? Stand by. We're on the air in a minute. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, B Duke department, please. Ah, uh, thank you, John Paul George and Randy. Okay, prepare to fade down the musical background as we go to the 10-second countdown for the Tom Likas Show. Thank you. We are 10 seconds away from the start of the Tom Likas Show. All departments, all personnel, stand by. The Tom Likas Show is about to go on the air. At three seconds, we will go to silence, and then we will cue the opening theme for the Tom Likas Show. Stand by. Cue the theme. All right, go, go. From Hollywood. What does that mean? It's the Tom Likas Show. I can't do it. We'll do it live. Okay. We'll, no. we'll do it live. And now. And now. Here he is. Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning into the Tom Likas Show. Here we are together again one last time on the radio. At least one last time right here. Thank you so much for being part of the program. We appreciate it. And we are here to wrap this baby up. In two hours, we will be done. And so will the format of 97.1 FM Talk. Uh, my thanks to Chris Olivero and the folks at CBS because... Um, these guys uh, decided they wanted me to be the last voice of the radio station because what they said to me was that um, for whatever reason, I guess because I've been here for almost 12 years, and uh, Howard Stern is gone, of course. Uh, a lot of people think of me as the voice of the radio station, and they want me to be the final voice you're going to hear on the air. And so I will be. It's uh, an honor to be here. It's a lot of fun. And, of course, uh, we're not doing the show from our usual location over on the lot at Paramount Pictures. We are doing our show from the radio station. And that presents, uh, of course, the usual technical snafus, including we're not going to have our usual telephone number because probably somebody over at the phone company, they probably had some cutbacks at the phone company. Somebody at the phone company forgot to forward our 800 number over here. 
So we're going to use a different phone number for today, and I'm going to give it to you right now. It's 888 520 That's the phone number. 888 Um, Before we do anything on this final broadcast... I didn't, you know what? I just wanted to come in here and do a nice show today and, and say goodbye. And of course, there's always something that trips you up, or there's always something that happens. And, uh, I don't know what the reason was that this happened, but I'm gonna address it here and get it out of the way right now. Today on the Frosty, Heidi, and Frank show, Frank Kramer, about an hour and a half ago, came on this this radio station, and in this studio. And he accused me of being the culprit for the end of the format here. And here is what he said. He said that uh, everybody here was willing to take a pay cut to keep the format going except me. That I was the only one who refused to take a pay cut. Well, I challenge him to prove that. Of course, he doesn't have a radio show now on which to prove it. Because, number one, uh, I will bet this week's salary that Mr. Kramer did not voluntarily take any pay cuts. And I'd like to see the proof. And on top of that, nobody ever asked me to take a pay cut here. Not the management. Frank Kramer didn't come to me and say, hey, we'd like to keep our jobs. Would you take a pay cut? Uh, it just didn't happen. Why would he say that? And why would he say on the air that he cares more about radio than I do? Because he was willing to take a pay cut and I wasn't. Now, I don't know. They, I know they were drinking in here. I know they were boozing. Maybe it's just the alcohol talk. But I want to tell you that uh, I have a contract, that the company has treated me just great. I'm as happy as a clam, and I think that... Maybe a little booze in there. Frank's a little jealous. Frank would like to be sitting on his farm in San Inez, growing grapes, watching the sunset, having a glass of vino. He'd like that. So to show that I'm a, a good sport, uh, I, I will openly make this offer to Frank Kramer right now. S since I am going to continue to be paid and I'm going to continue to be essentially an employee here, after the format change. Um, I have got some openings on the ranch. Uh, we're going to be planting tomatoes, corn, possibly grapes. And uh, if Frank needs a gig, I am more than happy to have him come in and pitch in. Uh, we can negotiate a salary. And in fact, uh, since he'll be doing his big podcast, uh, I've got an ISD online, I've got a studio there, and uh, after a day of uh, tilling the fields, I'll be more than happy to let him use my ISDN. I will not even charge him for it. He can come in and record his podcast right there. Because uh, I'm that kind of guy. <laughs> what is this he's saying on the air? That the Frosty, Heidi, and Frank care about radio more than I do, and that's why they voluntarily took the pay cut I wouldn't take? Please. I I challenge Frank Kramer uh, on television or in a newspaper uh, to show the proof that he voluntarily took a pay cut. Prove it. And furthermore, I challenge you publicly, prove that I refuse to take a pay cut or that I refuse to renegotiate my contract or that anybody ever approached me about having a pay cut to save the radio station. It never happened. It's a figment of Frank's boozy imagination. And... uh you know, I'm not going to, you know, did he think I was going to come in here and just, just like act like that never happened? Uh, no. No way. So, uh, I've thrown down. There we go. It's the final Tom Likas show. It's wide open telephones here. Anything goes, anything at all. We can talk about anything that's on your mind. It can be anything we discussed out of the air this week. It can be anything you think we should have talked about. You can call up, yell, scream, complain, jump up and down. It's all fair game as long as you're absolutely fascinating. 
If you're not, I'm going to kick your ass the hell off the air. All you need to do now is give me a call. Tom like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. When they're telling us we have to pay higher taxes to pay for Eagles health care. When you didn't pay your own taxes. Oh, yes. It's the very last Tom Likas show. And the telephone number for today is 888-520-9710. So you dial that number, and uh, they tell me that you will get on the air. Now, of course, what would the uh, final day uh, on the air be like without, forget one technical snafu, a myriad of technical snafus? I'll come down here to the studio. You should get out of the station to do the show. Don't go to Paramount. Come down to the station. Great. So about uh, 2.30, I say to Jack Silver, the program director, I say, okay, I better get down to the studio so I can orient myself. Oh, no, don't go in there. Frosty, Heidi, and Frankie doing a video. Don't go in there. And we get in here at 2.53. And we go in, and there's still people, like, popping buttons and pressing things, and Gary's learning how to run the board. <laughs> and... Uh, Nothing I'm, changes. We could have just gone to Paramount today. We could have just, you know, drunk heavily. As usual. Does this mean we're not boozing? Oh, it doesn't mean we're not boozing. Oh, okay. I'm out. I don't know if we can booze to the same extent we boozed over there. No. But, uh, no, so now, of course, we've got this Fakakta phone set up here where uh, all the phones in the uh, on my keyboard here, they all look like they're ringing. But uh, Dean J. D'Amelio uh, is in the other room, and none of his lines are lighting up at all. And I'm not even sure which telephone number is working. So hopefully we can fix this by 4.58 in time to change the format. It's a telephone talk show. And I'm going to be remembered for coming into the studio and vamping with Gary Zabramski <laughs> for two hours. That's going to be my legacy. <laughs> oh, man. There's still, You know what? If we got in the car, it'd be about 20 minutes. We could get to the That's studio true. over at Paramount and do the show from we over there. We could go back. Where the phones work. So we just play like, uh, you know... You can play some music or some best of you know, bits or something, and then just just go over there. Be done with this. I wonder if they'll let us back on the lot. Do you still have your credentials? I have my credentials. Well, I'll get us in. Yes, plus the guys at the gate all know me. They'll just wave us in. Go over there. How long would it take you to uh, fire that thing up? Two seconds. We could do it. All right. We got all the booze in the car, though. Oh, do we make the phones work now? Well, that's good. And and it's the triple eight five two oh ninety seven one oh number? I'm assuming. I don't know. All right. I'm guessing. I'm flying blind. Fire one of those up, see what happens. Let me ask Jackie. Uh, Jackie, what number did you dial uh, to get in here? Eight 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 five two oh ninety seven one oh. All right, that's what I needed to know. Because I'm all confused. Jackie, here you are, the first caller on the last Tom Likas show, and I'm here with our producer, Gary Zabransky. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. I am going to so miss you. You, I, This is my second time calling. You saved my brother's life. He tried to commit suicide over a divorce. I turned him on to you, and he was going to therapy. I told him, quit therapy and just listen to Tom. Stop paying for that and just listen to Tom. And he did. Now his wife is saying that his her son does not want to be with her, that she wants to be with dad, if she's thinking of giving him full custody, he's working, he's um, thinking of trading in his truck to get a better car, everything you tell him he is now doing, and I, just, I, I, I love you so much for that. Oh, thank you. And, I mean, I got with my boyfriend because I was always an, an independent woman, and, and thanks to you... He realized, you know, that he didn't need one of those fancy wancy little baby crier girls and needed someone to partner up with him. And that, again, was thanks to you. You're just amazing. You're the best. Don't listen to anybody who ever says that, you know, you don't belong on radio, that you have who to. Who said your that? Birth. Was that Frank Kramer? Did he say that too? No, that's all the dumb people who, all those dumb women who sit there and say that oh. you're wrong. But you're incredible. You're the best. I totally wish you luck. I will follow you wherever you go, Tom. Really? Yes. Wow. 
And, I mean, I told her I'm 34 years old. Um, I took up all my girlfriends, all my guy friends to you, everyone. I was crying yesterday while I was at a bar playing pool. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Well, but. Jackie, I'll miss you, and thank you so much for that. I appreciate the call. Let's go to Jeff here. Uh, Jeff, you're on the last Tom Lanka show. Hello. Well, thank you so much, Tom. Um, it's such a pleasure and an honor to be on this last show. I called you about a month and a half ago when you were looking for people who were going to start the year off with a divorce. I want to let you know that last week those papers came back and it's done. Very nice. And we are working that bull. We're starting to build that bullpen. It's spring training. We're looking for new recruits. So you, are you getting more ass than a toilet seat? Hey, it's starting to happen, buddy. I'm so proud of you. And I'm just so honored to... I'm so grateful that, you know, I was, I moved to Southern California and I was able to pick up your show because I would have saved myself a lot of time, wasted energy if I had just been able to hear your program when I was living outside of the area. And I want to thank you. And I just wanted to know, like, also, uh, do you think in the future you might have, like, I, I feel like you would fit in well, like, on a TV program, like on Spike or something, because it's the guy's channel, you know? Well, that's, uh, you, you could be my agent, for God's sake. <laughs> well, Tom... No, I, I, I seriously speaking, I, I, you know, I over the years I've had many people who have made inquiries about my availability, and, uh, uh, you know, my radio show takes up a lot of time, and it comes first. And so if I've got a little time off, I'm going to explore uh, some of those inquiries. Uh, you know, we did a, a TV, picture, uh, TV pilot for telepictures uh, uh, over the years. Uh, we uh, have uh, had some talks about book deals. Uh, uh, one way or another, you're going to see me. I'm not going anywhere. All right. Well, that's good. I just wanted to know, can you take me out Subway Christian Bell old school? What? what, what, what? Subway? Uh, Subway Spanish what? or English? Either one. Either one. Followed by Christian Bale. Subway plus school. Christian Bale plus old school. Yes, I can. Here you Thank go. You. Are you ready? Yes, I am. Understand. Tom like it. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. One eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. The Tom Likus Show. Tom Likas Show, 888-520-9710 is the telephone number, 888-520-9710. Some of the phone companies do not forward our phone number from the studio at Paramount to the studio at 97.1 FM Talk. And so, <laughs> we're putting it together with spit and glue today. Gary Zabransky, our producer, is on the board. And... Uh, i got friends here in the studio. Let me bring on my original producer, Mr. Eric Braverman, who is here in studio with me. Eric, good to see you. Goodbye, Tom. <laughs> Eric was there good in 1994. By the way, it was Eric and I who sat up for three nights, if I recall correctly, trying to find... We were going through pages and pages of, of telephone numbers in the 1-800 area code to find a phone number for the Tom Likas show. And we don't even get to use it today. That's right. We can't even use it on the last show. <laughs> we should keep it, though. I know. Uh, we should keep it. Just take calls during the day? Uh, you know, I could do that, but of course... People would call, and yeah, then I'd would. and I'd be paying to receive the calls too. That's a good point. That wouldn't be good. Eric, you are doing some work with the Dodger Radio Network, which is fantastic. I am indeed. And uh, Eric, of course, was not only my original producer, but for many years was the program director of KABC Radio here in Los Angeles, and is uh, one of the shining talents in the radio business, and somebody who I have known for twenty or so years, probably more than twenty years now. Uh, Nineteen eighty-eight. More than 20 years. Yeah, a long time. It's pretty outrageous. 
So uh, how many of these shows have you been at now? Not just mine, but everybody. People doing their last show. You know, show. it's uh, <laughs> it's it's occurring way too frequently these days. But, I know. Uh, yeah, this is like, and, and the second time I've done this with you. So you sound like the CEO of Linens and Things. <laughs> <laughs> Which is strangely where I may be working next. <laughs> I can fold. That's where the NAB convention is being held, as a matter of fact. Very exciting. Well, thank you for coming down. And Absolutely. I wouldn't miss it. Oh, the best. Eric Braverman. Such a pleasure. Uh, you know, it's always a funny thing, you know, because I've got my current producer, Gary Zabransky, and it's kind of like having your two, uh, you got your wife and your ex-wife in the studio. <laughs> you have to admit I was prettier. Well, I gotta tell you something. Gary's relationship with me has outlasted any marriage I've ever had. <laughs> now, what does that tell you? It's pretty outrageous. I didn't talk back. You didn't talk back. That's right. You didn't give me any lip. <laughs> anyway, here we are. One eight 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 five two zero ninety seven one zero. That's the telephone number on the final edition of the Tom Likas Show. By the way, many of you wrote in and said that you wanted the final edition of the Tom Likas Show to have. A Flash Friday element. You wanted it to be Flash Friday one last time. And even though it's not Flash Friday season, the reason it's not Flash Friday season is because with our normal hours of 3 to 7 or 3 to 8 or whatever, uh, with our normal hours, by the way, now the secret is out. 7 to 8 was a rerun. It was 3 to 7 here in L.A. That was it. Many of you never knew, but it was a tape. But okay, so 3 to 7, uh, you know, when sun goes down at 4.30, there's not a lot of sunlight to do Flash Friday. But uh, by now, sunset's about 5.15, 5.20. We're only, we're only going to be here until 5 o'clock Pacific time. And that means that, uh, well, we can have Flash Friday today. Of course we can. So as one last show of support, folks, uh, turn your headlights on to let everybody know you're listening to our last show today. Turn the headlights on. And, ladies, if uh, you see somebody with the headlights on, give them the reward they're looking for. You turn your headlights on, and, uh, of course, the ladies will turn their headlights on. That's how it works. So uh, go ahead, boys. Turn the headlights on right now. Everybody who's a Tom Likas listener, turn the headlights on on any freeway, highway, byway, wherever you are. Turn them on. And, ladies, uh, show us what you got. Let's do it. One last time. Robert, Robert's on the 405 on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom, how's it going? It's going okay, Robert. If there was a time to care, it would be today. That's exactly right. Yes. I'm going to keep it short and sweet. Just want to say, love the show. I'm going to miss it. My Mondays are going to be a lot less entertaining. And uh, What is? My Mondays. Oh, your Mondays are oh, less entertaining. Every day is actually. Starting Monday, I'm sorry. All right. Starting Monday. Okay. But uh, just want to say bye. Thanks for all the good years and the memories. And uh, can I be taken out old school? Yes. Yes, of course you can. Triple eight five two zero ninety seven one zero is the number for the last edition of the Tom Likas Show on the final Flash Friday of the Tom Likas Show. Let's say hello to Matt in Los Angeles. Matt, you're on the final Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello. Hello, Matt. Long time listener, first and last time caller. <laughs> Why, thank you so much, Matt. Tom, I, I sincerely hope in the studio are Ashley Madison, Miles L. Berman, worshiping you for uh, advertising for them for over the years. I really do. Um, I, I wanted to uh, say I always thought I would get a chance, and I'm really sad. This is the this is the only chance I'm going to get, but. Um, I listen to you. I actually started uh, September 11th, 2001. Really? And, uh, yes, sir. Uh, they, uh, you know, Howard was doing his show, and they they pulled him off, and they dragged uh, you on. Well, and actually, that's not what happened. Uh, what did happen okay. was that uh, Howard Stern uh, did his show in New York normally from 6 a.m. till about 11 a.m. New York time. And here in L.A., uh, this station uh, ran Howard Stern live at 6 a.m. Eastern or 3, 3 a.m. Pacific time. And then at 6, they would press the rewind button and go back to the beginning, and they would start the show from the beginning. Mm. So you could hear the whole show. So uh, 9-11, uh, the events of 9-11 happened about 6.30 uh, Pacific time on that day. Right. And so what they did was they switched to the live feed of Howard, and Howard stayed on the air until 12.15 in New York. And and what that meant was when when Howard finished after six hours and fifteen minutes on the air, he finally walked out and and I came in here and and continued on for the rest of the day. 
I see, I see. I, I just recall the, well, first I recall some idiot asking if you could blow, if you could blow him up. I, World Trade Center style, yes. <laughs> yes. And, uh, and uh, you were very professional. Instead of having people worry and freak out, you got people thinking, you, 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 uh, you were asking questions, you, you were so level-headed, level-headed, I just really wanted to commend you for an amazing job you did and carried through present. Thank you so much, Father. Thank you, Matt. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. No, I'm sorry. It's 888-520-9710 because the regular number is not working today. James and Covina, you're on the final Tom Likas show on Flash Friday. Hello. Tom, how you doing? How you doing? I'm doing, I'm doing. Quick question. Um, the, uh, you said their format change is for the station to save money, right? But aren't they having to still pay your contract? Yes. Isn't that all going to cost more money? No, it costs the money that's in the budget to pay me. But aren't they paying Why would, pay why would it cost more money? They, they, they wrote out a contract. And the budget says this is how much they're going to pay Tom Likens. Uh, how does it mean they're going to pay more money? Because they're still paying your salaries and Corollas and well, Bobby right, uh, and 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 they should pay everybody's salary. Yeah, I agree with that. But I mean, if they're still paying all you guys, and now they're changing a, changing the whole format and everything, isn't that going to cost more money to do yeah, but, that? Yeah, but you see, for every show, and this is where the cost of talk radio comes in. They have to have a producer, an engineer, right, and a screener. So that's where they're going to save the money? They're going to save money on support staff. And they're going to save money because, for example, uh, I think our morning show had a staff of like eight people. So it's not a great deal of money they're going to be saving, though. Well, but I don't not. know how much money they're going to save, but it's none of my business. I mean, this is uh, you, you really uh, – I don't own the station. I, I work uh, at the behest of the Columbia Broadcasting System. Mm -hmm. And they were nice enough to write me a beautiful contract, which I signed and, and they signed. And and they can do whatever they like. Hey, Tom, one other thing. My girlfriend. By the way, I, I want to give you the I want to give you the analogy I gave the other day. OK. Yeah. I mean, we, we but this is not a ratings issue. We in men 25 to 54, which was always our target demographic. We're number one in Los Angeles in the afternoon in the last trend. Number one. It's not a ratings issue. It's it's a cost issue. And I'll give you an example. Starbucks makes a great cup of coffee, right? Yeah. Yeah. But, but they just had to close 700 stores. Wow. So, uh, clearly, oh, what are they saving on a couple of baristas? I mean, you can make the same argument. And the bottom line is that the company needs to save money, in their opinion, and, and, and they want to uh, attract a certain demographic that they think might generate more revenue. And and as far as I'm concerned, I'm a hired hand here. I do my job. I come in, and uh, I work until they tell me to go home. But uh, what am I going to do? Come in here and, and and be bitter about that? Absolutely not. Well, I think it's cool that they're honoring your contract and you still get your paycheck. They not. By the way, let me say this about CBS: they're not only honoring my contract. I have been here yesterday and today saying goodbye, which you never get to do in radio. And on top of that, they told me eight days ago that this was going to happen. Mm. You don't normally get that kind of notice. It's been one of the most professional experiences I've had in the radio business. One of the best. That's good. Sounds like a real class company there. Well, they certainly treated me with class. I have not a complaint in the world if they ever wanted me to come back and work for them, I would. And I wouldn't say that about every company. Mainly because half the companies I've worked for have gone out of business or merged with other companies. Can I ask for one last favor, Tom? <laughs> yes. Uh, my my girlfriend, Kristen, loves you. She, she loves all your rules and everything. And uh, can you take her and I out with the bong hit, no cough? Yes. Yes, I certainly can, James. Here you go. Thank you. No cough. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom. Then Eric had to add a cough. Thank you for that. Uh, Greg is calling from West Hollywood on the Tom Likas show at triple eight five two zero ninety seven one zero. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Greg. Hey, Tom. I just want to say a huge thank you on behalf of all rational thinking people for your for being so outspoken about being an atheist. It is so rare to hear anybody talk about that stuff. In this country, I've spent a lot of time overseas. I've lived for years in Australia. 
People are people keep their religion to themselves. This country is crazy how obsessed it is with religion. And I just think you're a, firstly a brave man, but also an intelligent, rational thinking man. And I love that you spoke about that. It's awesome. Thank God somebody came along and did that. Well, nobody does it. I don't know. I mean, I don't know if people are scared or right uh, over his head. You know. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I think <laughs> I. Got I got you, Tom. Very funny. Uh, no, I just, uh, you know, I, I, I just think it's great. I love the Ask, Ask the Atheist segment. I wish you did it every week. Uh, oh, I'll tell you what. Uh, we're going to start doing it every week, effective immediately. <laughs> please, please do. Please do. I'll be listening anytime you yes, want to do that. I'll have to ask Frank if he'll let me have some space on his podcast. Yeah, why don't you do that? <laughs> uh, but seriously, Tom, uh, really, uh, you know, you are uh, have been a joy to listen to. I don't agree with everything you say, but oh, you know, above all, you're entertaining. And uh, uh, but yeah, I just wanted to say on behalf of, behalf of people who actually uh, uh, think like rational adults in this country, uh, you're one of the few. Uh, thanks for talking out on that subject. Thank, Thank you. you. I appreciate it, Greg. Appreciate the call, Tony in the Hollywood. Here you are on the final Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey Tom, this thing with the uh, with the triplets. Not only was Frank bagging on you, but they all three were. But the thing that it well, is, what were the rest? I, I only heard part of that. What were they all bagging on me for? Uh, they were telling you, saying that you could go stomp some grapes and that you're fat and you're uh, mm. just an a hole, whatever. Really? But uh, basically, the reason why Bonaduce went to two o'clock is because people were tired of hearing reruns of the triplets, and they told them that. You should do a live show at two o'clock, and they said we don't want to do it unless you pay us more. So if they were, they are the ones who re, who re, required more payment. To keep I going. think if they like radio that much, they should have volunteered their time. Yeah, that's what I mean. They're complaining about you not wanting to pay cut, but they're the ones. Who By the way, if they money. really like radio, the folks over at KPFK uh, Pacifica Radio, the, the thing, I, they, are they going to start there on Monday working for nothing? The thing is, they're all from Indiana because they love radio. Tom, they're they're all from Middle America. They're going to have to go back home. That's why they're pissed. And and another thing, I think what you should do. Is, I hear Terre Haute is getting FM talk. By the way, you should do an English afternoon show on a Spanish music station. That would be I'm going I'm gonna, I'm gonna to get paired up with Pioli, and that's going to be my next uh, my next gig. Because people are tired of hearing talk radio all day long. It's music. In the day. But they're not, and that's the thing. We shouldn't be spreading that. I mean, nope. The fact is, the fact is, the ratings are fantastic. That's what people don't understand. But they keep rehashing the same news story all day long, all day long, all day long. Oh, you mean on AM radio? No, on everything. Whatever happened to some celebrity or oh, professional I, athlete? I, I don't think we do that. Whatever the main story is of the day, like the octuplets, it's hashed all day long. We never talked about that. Well, I mean the others during the day. So. Oh. But, I well, mean, if you're uh, sick of it, I'm sorry for you. I think Spanish Now you music, get your wish. Spanish music with afternoon English be good. Okay. Are you Thank a program director, by the way? Uh, no. Are you a consultant? Uh, I wish I was. And and why are you not? Uh, probably because... Uh, no expertise in the field? Yeah, no experience. That's what I figured. Thank you so much for the call. Tom like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. One eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six six. The Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show, the final edition. Coming to you, uh, as they say on. KNX from the Miracle Mile. After the show, I'm going to get out of the main company and pull lunch to do a little shopping. What? When did that happen? In the 80s? Oh. So why do they call it the Miracle Mile? Because tar is bubbling up across the street? All right. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. <laughs> yes, the La-, La Brea Tar Pits, future home of every KABC listener. Right, Eric Braverman? Hey, hey. 
He's gone now. He can oh. say it. <laughs> <laughs> they took good care of me. I'm very happy with them, and I love my old listeners. Okay. I understand. And you make great pizza, by the way. 1-800-5800-TOM. The final edition. No, it's not. It's 888-520-9710. I wanted to sound smooth as silk today, and then this came up. 888-520-9710. That's the phone number. All right, uh, we continue with your calls. It's Flash Friday. Turn your headlights on. If you see anybody uh, flashing out there, call them with your report. If you see the headlights on, call them with your report. And then the big after party today, everybody says, where's the after party? It's at Molly Malone's on Fairfax, 6th and Fairfax, Molly Malone's. And I think it's already going on there. They've got the station on the speakers blasting. If you're at Molly Malone's, you can call in and give us a full report. But I understand it's uh, packed over there. And uh, I guess we'll probably grace you with our presence uh, before I head up to the ranch. Uh, I, I want to. I want to give. Uh, I want to show Frank some pictures of the ranch before I go up there. Just want to see what he's missing. Let's say hello here to Matt. Uh, Matt, I'm assuming is in uh, Rancho Cucamonga on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Dad. Hello, son. Are you in Rancho Cucamonga or the world's longest city, Rancho Santa Margarita? Which one? Rancho Cucamonga. Okay, just checking. Yeah. I want to say that uh, I haven't always uh, been uh, one of your sons. I remember exactly when it was I started calling you dad. It was a show you did where you started talking about as soon as you tell a woman she's beautiful, she'll think, what the hell am I doing with this guy? And she can do better. And from that day forward, it was about five years ago, I seen you live in person in L.A. You did a show a couple years back. It was absolutely great. Uh, thanks to you, I've never been married, no kids. I've gone from just dating, you know, eight and nines on the street to even taking strippers out of clubs and having fun with them with all from listening to you on how to do it. Well, I'm so glad to hear that, Matt. And I thank you for that. Let's go to Mike. Mike is listening to the online stream in Las Vegas on the Tom Likas Show Final Edition. Hello. Hello, Dad. Hello, son. I must tell you, Tom, that you have really, really improved my quality of life. I have been listening to you since 1999. And I remember listening to you when I was a security guard at a mall in Sherman Oaks, California, making a couple of bucks an hour, you know, figuring out what I'm going to do with my life. But then, you know what, listening to the common sense and you talking about money and how good things are, really changed my life. I'm out here in Las Vegas. I'm successful. I'm in real estate for over five years now. I have so much to be thankful of, and it's because of the generosity of you being able to share your experiences with people and basically teaching people common sense, which, unfortunately, this day in our society, we don't seem to have a lot of. Um, I had to be on this show. I had to, you know, wish you out, you know, wish you well into whatever you're doing with your future. I really hope that we're able to hear you on the air again. Um, you know, especially being out here in Vegas, really not able to follow your show that much except on the uh, Internet. But you're a great man. I've met you a couple of times at some listener parties, and you're personable, and I really think you got a lot to educate people on. Mike, thank you very much for that. I appreciate the call. Uh, David is listening to us online in Dallas on the final Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, David. Dallas loves you, baby. Thank you so much. Tom, just want to take a quick moment on this sad day and, and thank you for the level of entertainment and, and education you've given me here and, and your listeners here in Dallas over the past nine years or so, and we, we miss it. You are more than welcome. Unfortunately, our station did a few months ago what L.A. and other markets are doing now, which is taking away what was a great talk lineup and turning it into, into the crap they believe will, will cut in today's radio market. I mean, I, I know times are tough, but, I mean, you take away Circuit City, we still have Best Buy. Take away linens and things, we still have, what, Bed Bath & Beyond, but take away Tom? I mean, what do we have? The Jonas Brothers in L.A.? <laughs> Which Dallas Cowboy got arrested in, last night in Dallas? I mean, no one can replace Tom Likas except for Tom Likas. And if you never return to talk radio, thank you for what you've already given us. It was a great ride. If you do return, we hope that day comes sooner than later and on your terms. Well, keep in mind, I've got uh, myspace.com slash Tom Likas. 
That's going to be maintained. So it's going to be it's going to be maintained by me because I'm going to have a lot of free time to maintain it. Fantastic. And and blowmeuptom.com. Uh, we will keep those maintained. And uh, if I make an appearance or whatever it is I do, you'll know. And if uh, I reemerge, you're going to find it out there. Fantastic. Love it. Hey, for everybody here in Dallas, can you take me out Terrell Owens style? Then take him out JFK Senior style? Wow. Now that's a Dallas takeout if I ever heard one. <laughs> now Terrell Owens style, I know we did it at one time. Didn't we have uh, his crying uh, press conference? Do we have that? We don't have that anymore? Or just do a crying baby and then take him Crying out baby Senior and style. take him out JFK Senior style. Yeah, we can do that. Thanks, Tom. Here you go. As soon as Gary pressed the button. There you go. Senior, it's Dallas. That is as tasteless as the first day we played it. I'm offended. I don't know why the audience asks for that, but they keep asking for it. One eight hundred five. No, sorry. Triple eight five two zero ninety seven one zero is the telephone. Come on over to the studio. Don't do it from Pat. Come on over to the station. Come on over. It's Michael in Redlands. Uh, the final Tom Likas show. Hello. What's going on, Tom? I'm doing the final Tom Likas show. Uh, I know, dude. Today was a sad day at work. I I understand. <laughs> I thank you. Yeah, I mean, uh, I just want to say thanks to all the advice you've given me over the years. My dad turned me on to you when I was about 17. I'm 23 now. You've gotten me your advice. You got me out of some pretty hairy situations and stuff, and you just taught me how to get more ass in the toilet seat. Well, I yes, I'm glad to hear that. That's uh, that's encouraging. Now, hopefully, you'll keep that going uh, after I'm gone. Oh, I'm going to Tom. I follow your advice to a T. Really? Yeah, I mean, it's helped me out a lot. Sounds good to me. Well, I'm going to miss you, buddy. Take it easy. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate the call. All right, it's Flash Friday, and we've got one hour to go. This is the final hour coming up, the final hour, with limited commercial interruption. All right, so there you go. By the way, turn the headlights on. Call us at 888-520-9710. If you see any great breasts out there, you see the headlights. And don't forget, tonight, the after party is at Molly Malone's. 6th Street and Fairfax, right here in Los Angeles. More to come. Don't go anywhere. The Tom Likas Show.